Classic 350 J series engine. Great engine, wrong color. Hello, welcome. Yeah, back to the Classic 350. Don't worry, it's not the Meteor that's exploded into a million parts. We're gonna get this back out again. I got my, got my frame just hanging around here. Now, we're gonna have a look at this engine today. I'm gonna give it a little clean up first. And I've realized I never drained the oil out of it. <laughs> So we're going to find a way to get the oil out of this now without just tipping it over the floor. So we're going to do that. It's got a nice finish on. It's very tough. It's, a, it's one of the best factory finishes I think I've seen on a motorbike. It looks like it'll have a good and long life. And even with 7,000 miles on, there's no alloy corrosion or lifting going on anywhere on this. So I'm very impressed with that. For this bike, I want it to have a kind of black look. So I don't want this gray engine. It's not gonna quite work. I like the polished covers. So we're gonna refurbish them. I'm gonna keep that polished, but the engine core, I wanna have that black and gloss back as well, I think. Not the kind of matte, like the black classic engines or the my Meteor. I think I want it to be gloss black because I want to powder coat the wheels gloss black. And I think I'd like it all to match. And maybe fork lowers gloss black. I was going to polish them, but I don't know. Anyway, so gloss black engine core. So you won't have this contrast here. It'll just be black. Get these polished up nice. I think that's what I want. So, first things first, let's get the oil out of this. And then um, we'll get these covers off and we'll have a look underneath. All right, if you've never changed your oil on one of these before, it's got a really awkward arrangement where instead of a nice drain plug, it's basically got a filter housing cap with two eight millimeter bolts. And then you have to undo the two bolts take the cap off and the whole lot will drop out on you it's quite dirty and um not very sort of convenient all right but a drain plug would have been easier so it's going to make it a little more awkward in fact why don't I just tip it on its side I can show you <laughs> the oil breathers up here look so um if I tipped it over too far I'm going to get a right boot full of oil so let's not do that There it is right there, look. So that cap has to come off. And the whole lot is gonna drop out of there. Now, I think I've got a plan now. Let's widgle this to the edge. Hopefully, if I can pop this cap off and get a container, we can do that without Drop in the whole bike. And there is a nice clear view of the underside of a J-Series engine. And there is the screen cap. There's a filter screen under there, but we're gonna see that now. Hopefully I've lent it over far enough that um, this isn't gonna start spewing oil straight away. Oh, that was quite tight. I thought I slipped off then, but. It was just tight. Right, will that go under there? Kind of. What's going to happen? Okay, a few little drips. Okay. Okay, there's 
the filter cap. A new O-ring will come in the service kit, which is good because that one feels, feels quite hard and aged. We will not be reusing that. Oil smells okay. If oil can smell okay. Let's pull that screen out. Looks quite dirty, the oil. Certainly due an oil change. But hey, no chunks of metal in it. Got to be good. I hope that's going in the bowl. <laughs> I should have set up a mirror or something. Not bad. I think we'll call that a good job. Right, let's do the other drain hole. Yeah, there's hardly anything come out of there. This was a suspiciously clean bike. Makes me wonder if they rode it in the sea or something. Right. Oh, it's heavier than I thought. Wow, that's a heavy motor. Right, let's do it. All right, it's gotta be a good 50 kilos. 50, 60, surely. Extremely expensive accident. Okay, so there's our alloy cover. Now that's weird because it's brown, <laughs> but it can't be rust because obviously it's aluminium. There's got to be some kind of dirt still. I'll have a little scrape of that. But weirdly, that was totally invisible on the bike. Fairly clean everywhere else. Right, now I've got a close look. Turns out this is some kind of um, substance on top of it, something gooey. I'm thinking possibly some anti-rust thing that's come up off the wheel or anything gonna come flying out? Sealed with, sealed with an O-ring. Okay, okay the fuel injector, an inlet hose, I'm sure doesn't need to be there. Nice long bolts. What's going to happen? Okay, 
fuel injector. That's a very delicate looking part. Look at that. Right on the end you can see the little spray nozzles. And that's got a o-ring type seal. Yes, that fits over a nice tight flange there. I thought that was just going to be sort of a smooth collar. But no. There it is. Got an in and out. It's got sort of long tails that face the engine. And short that face the back. And if I feel that with my fingers, I can feel that the profile inside is different. So that obviously is important that that goes round the right way. Lastly, we've got this oil breather hose, which goes to the airbox. Could have done that ages ago, really, couldn't I? No problem there. Let's get this um, neutral light out of the way. Just to show you what's going on underneath the um, neutral position indicator. It looks like it's a couple of brass contacts. And that, that drum will turn with the gear position. And when it contacts the contact, it's in neutral. And I'm guessing on the Meteor, there's more contacts. And then it knows what gear you're in. Right, to polish these covers, I'm going to take them off because it's going to be much easier off the bike. And also, they won't conflict with the painting. Okay, whole load of bolts. All the same length anyway. Right, is this going to give up its secrets easily? Or is it going to be hard? Did I do all the bolts? Yes. Oh, there's a little slot in the top. It makes it look like it wants to be levered off. Well, it's like the thought of this. locating dowel somewhere. I 
would have taken the centre cap out, but I haven't got the right size Allen drive yet. I wonder if that's what's holding it. No, it's on the shaft here, I think. go. Yeah, it was those two shafts. And the stator. Nice and clean in there. The gasket is torn, that's okay, because we're going to get new gaskets. Is the inside. Let's have a look around. There's the lovely flywheel. Still got a spark plug in. Lovely bit of engineering. I bet this is full of nice big powerful magnets. That's a yes. And these nibbly bits. I'm guessing. Might help with the timing. Yeah. That'll be the spark timing. It's on the stator. Look, there's a sensor. So that sensor count how fast these little nubs are passing. A bit like the ABS ring. So it knows exactly how fast the engine's going. See if I look around this side somewhere. Here it is. I didn't make these marks by the way. There's a nub missing. And the fact it's missing is going to tell the computer exactly where the engine is in its stroke. So that it'll know to um, fire the spark plug. I wonder what those markings mean. They're obviously very deliberately made by someone. Perhaps they individually... Um, time it after assembly. That's when it's assembled. They spin it up and they find where the sensor wants top dead sensor to be. And a guy marks it because it's made this mark but it's not in the middle of these two nubs, look. But the nubs must have been important because he's made a felt tip mark. And some figures. So perhaps after assembly There's a bit of an offset needed. Hmm, very interesting. It all looks quite nice in here. And you can see that there's, there's those grooves, look. For putting a screwdriver in, just to gently lever that cover off. If you just have a look in the top there, like you can see the cam chain. Running in its plastic guides. Off up to run the camshaft. There's the generator. Three 
be phases by the look, as most generators are. So how many coils have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 17, 18. That would make sense. So six coils per phase. So as the magnet swings around into that phase, I don't know if it's those six, but it'll be a set of six, a set of six, and a set of six as the magnet swings into this region of coils, voltage will rise in this bank. It'll reach a peak, then it will fall away again. At which point the other side of the magnet will start to swing around the other pole and the voltage will rise and fall again but in a different direction but because there's three backs of coils as the magnet swings around voltage will rise in this bank and as it falls away it's already rising in the next bank and as that one falls away it's already rising in this bank so you've got three overlapping waves that relentlessly push electricity out of these three connections so it'll be surging in this one and as it as it starts to fall off this one will surge then this one and then back around to here and that's what they mean by three phase electricity in your house is usually in most parts of the world single phase so you get one phase in your house Then you go into the regulator rectifier and that smooths all those waves out as a nice consistent DC supply and throws the rest away as heat, which is why they've got all those fins on. That's a lovely little thing. It's got its own power station. Right, another load of bolts. Here we go, big pile of bolts and all the same length. Are they the same length as the other side as well? Yeah, all the same length. So both sides, all the same length. I see Hitchcock sell a stainless steel bolt kit for these, which I'll probably get. Although these aren't corroded. I know they're quite, they're a nice quality bolt actually. They haven't corroded at all. I suppose if I was being uncharitable, I could look online and just buy the right ones. Though what's interesting is they're stamped 10.8. So that's quite a high tensile grade bolt, 10.8. If it was 8.8, .8, that'd be the sort of more usual grade if you just go and buy a steel bolt. But the fact they've used 10.8 bolts for all these makes me think perhaps I should stick with them because stainless steel is absolutely nowhere near as strong as an 8.8 .8 grade bolt, let alone 10.8. So the fact they've actually used 10.8, perhaps I'll stick with that. And it's not like they've gone rusty. Oil filters under here. We could have done that earlier when we were making a mess.
being so lazy with this tool, to be honest, aren't I? Right, brace yourself. Okay, well, there wasn't a flood. Nice and clean. Let's go and get that tub ready. Used oil filter. We'll be using that. One, two, three of those levering slots again. So let's just pop that in there gently. Ooh, crack it off. One there. One there. One at the bottom. Right, let me just pop some tissue down under here. slid all the way back on. Here we go. Here we are. Quite a used oil sort of smell. Definitely needed a good oil change. We'll have a good look at this in a sec. Let's just lay that off, as we say in the business, lay it off. That front shaft with the roller bearing, I bet that's the balance shaft, because it's too far forward to be the crank. That must be the crank. It's got this cute little chain to run the oil pump. Quite loose actually, but then I suppose it doesn't have to be super tight. There's no uh, tensioner. Got this nice little oil pump down here. Everything's looking pretty good. So these are all the clutch plates. There's some big springs under here. That keeps it all pushed together. So the engine drive gets transferred through this basket, as they call it, onto these plates. And then this will drive the gearbox. Be interesting to check those valves and see um, if I did a good job of setting the uh, clearances. I'm thinking not, to be honest. If you remember that episode. This time, I am going to pull the gasket out. This is getting a new one. There we go. Hopefully that will look a lot better next time it goes on. 
Though the fact that those stickers weren't even ever visible on the bike makes me think you don't see a lot of this head cover. Maybe just that edge, really. I have to remember that when I go nuts on trying to polish this within an inch of its life, because it's never going to be seen. It's all still good under here. This rubber gasket's definitely gone quite brittle, but it'll be getting a brand new one. Just for a laugh, let's have a look at those valve clearances now. Right, this hole in the cab needs to be at the top. Very easy to do now. The exhaust should have been 0.18 millimeters. There's a gap. Definitely dragging. There's no extra play. Well, I think I did quite a good job there, considering the terrible circumstances we did it under. Right, let's have a look at the intake. It should be 0 0.08 millimeters. So we've got a gap, much smaller one. Obviously it's a much more flexible then. Blade. White dragging enough that one and I can feel a tiny bit of play so it didn't do that one quite tight enough that's okay we can fix that at least it wasn't too tight because that would be bad it's a tiny little cover on the side here and that's got that gasket trapped underneath it's just got to pop this off Original gasket shouldn't be at seven thousand miles. Hmm. I think it is though. There should be some sealant holding this in that we don't want to end up in the engine. Inside there. Great, here she is, and that's as much as I want to take to apart. Looks a lot skinnier now, doesn't it? covers for polishing. Oh, I need to buy a Allen drive. I think it's 14 millimeters. I'll check that and order one. I've ordered some new brake cleaner, some engine enamel, and we'll get this painted, polished, back together. There we go. Quick look at the meteor, just because. There we go, hope you enjoyed that. That's as much as I want to do to that. I just want to paint it now, paint it, polish it, make it good, 
hopefully not forget anything. Go to order that service kit and gaskets. Better do that as soon as I get home now. Because that'll be the next, very next thing. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to. I'll see you next time. And I want to get this done. So we're going to do that. See you soon.